and what's up you guys welcome 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 to the mango grove my name is krisha and this is today's bitcoin analysis video now um i'm not going to i don't have the energy to start off with too many pleasantries so i'm just gonna get into today's agenda we're first of course gonna be starting with a bit of housekeeping and then we'll be moving on over to the meat of the analysis the meat being this bitcoin had a spectacular weekly close i mean just look i mean what the past one week we did a good what 40 percent but no i'm gonna be looking at the close with respect to well its regions of uh, support and resistance very 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 important regions of support and resistance so we will be covering that today in addition to that i'm gonna well pose the question i'm sure a lot of you guys are probably i'm not gonna say a lot i think when i say a lot of you got guys i'm generalizing i'm hoping that many of you guys are not in this boat um, but if you are faced with this question right now, should you buy here? Or, Krisha, would you buy here right now? Would I buy here at this current juncture of the market? And then after that, we'll be moving on over to, well, the important dates that we need to keep our eyes on. Is there any important event coming up? As if the past one week hasn't been eventful already, there is another important event coming up. So we'll be going over that specific date. Um, and then right after that, um, I'll be talking about the bull run, okay, the, um, well, the incoming bull run, because in my opinion, I believe that the bull run, my friends, is here. The trend begins when the trend begins, not when we take out the highs of the previous cycle, okay, not when we, not when we take out the 60k high, not when we take out the 20k high, not when we take out this uh, 1000k, well, 1000k, 1k high. No, the trend begins when the trend begins. If you fail to capitalize when the trend begins, you are basically knocking yourselves out of the game from a lot of very, very easy profits to be had. Okay, it's it's the difference between this move right here and then this move right here. Do you really want to be missing out on this? And these gains are still like pretty, pretty intense gains, okay? It also gives you that momentum getting into the euphoric stage of the market. You want to start building on that momentum right now if you are, um, if you want to be an active trader. So we'll be talking about the next bull run to come. So with that, let's go ahead and start off with today's housekeeping. Now, the housekeeping has primarily to do with those of you who took advantage of, well, the birthday discount and you guys are now in the seed program. Um, uh, just a quick heads up, I'm going to need your trading view IDs, okay? Now, I know that um, I'm not very sort of specific with what it is that you get with the program, but in addition to the program, in addition to the course, you also get access to the entire Mango Seed Indicator Suite, okay? So the indicators that you get are these. All right, so from all the indicators started on my list, you will be getting access to the Mango Ribbon, okay? The Mango Risk Management Indicator, which you will have to make your best friend as you progress through the course, okay? It is that one indicator that is going to let you sleep at night. I promise you, it's going to let you stay in your trades, being stress-free the entire time, okay? So the Mango Risk Management Indicator you will get access to and the Mango Mom Oscillator. Okay, which is, uh, yeah, your oscillator, but it's got some few other nifty features that's going to give you a better tell on whether or not the asset that you're looking at is in a bullish phase or a bearish phase. Okay, that way you're able to sort of filter out your divergences a tad bit better. So, um, yeah, these are the indicators that you're going to be getting access to in addition, of course, to the Mango Seed Discord chat that is the private server. So, um, yeah, make sure you're shooting as your trading view username as soon as you sign up for the course. Cool beans, cool beans. Now, for those of you who are still looking to jump in, of course, you're going to find the dis this is the best time. You're going to find the discount code in the description below as well as on my screen right here. Okay, so you guys can just go ahead and copy paste that if you're looking to jump in. Now, of course, guys, the seed is what is recommended by me. Okay, the seed program is, uh, is the way to go. Now is the time, okay, to be capitalizing on these phases of the market where you can actually hunker down and study and then basically um, capitalize and use your knowledge throughout the entire other euphoric phase to come. Okay, that's where the knowledge is going to be. Um, it's going to pay dividends. Now with this, guys, we can jump into, well, the first point of today's agenda, which is bitcoin's weekly close so let's get on to that perfect now here we are bitcoin on the weekly time frame guys we opened up a brand new weekly candle today and just look at the move we've had so far now what's so spectacular about bitcoin's chart is that yeah while you look at that previous weekly candle right 
Um, that did a good, what, 27? Yeah, 26.47% just on the candle body alone. However, what you guys need to understand is that Bitcoin had actually been rallying the prior week, okay? So yeah, we did see that dump all the way back down to 19K, which now in hindsight was a freaking gift for anyone who did not have their positions in, okay? Price then got a pickup on that. So technically the rally started at the end of that week. So if you have to really withstanding the wick from the prior week all the way to where we closed earlier today, that was a good 44% on Bitcoin that we've had in the past one and a half week. Okay, so this was a diabolical move, but what makes this picture even better is the amount of resistance that we have now claimed. And the thing about that resistance point, guys, is that this is not any ordinary resistance. Now I'm gonna drive in the importance of what Bitcoin has done with this weekly close. Okay, and if you guys wanna follow along, I want you guys to get on over to your weekly charts and turn on your mango ribbon indicator. Okay, as soon as you turn it on, you're going to see the picture right in front of you. Just look at the resistance that we have cleared now. Now, remember, this was a point that we had been harping on about now for weeks on end, right? We were up against that, that cluster of resistance at the 200 simple moving average, which is the red line on my chart, the 200 exponential moving average, the purple line, and the 55 exponential right there, the green line. Okay, that was an entire cluster of resistance. And in fact, Bitcoin had been rejected off of it a total of one, two, as well as this was the third time. This candle right here, just like um, in the middle of last week, Bitcoin actually got up to that region and saw a massive rejection on that cluster of resistance, once again, giving us that pullback. Just to give you guys a good visual on it, I'm going to take you now. I have, I have the entire cluster marked out with that red box territory right there, right? That was a nice, beautiful red box territory. Now, if I take you guys on over to the daily time frame, I want you to notice this candle right here. Notice how price got up there. We rallied on top only for that daily to close under, okay? Consolidated, put in a bull flag. In fact, that bull flag technically saw a breakout right here. Okay, you see that candle close. I'm gonna zoom in one more time into this price action. Look at just how well it sort of took out that region of resistance, right? Um, the res resistance marking the closes and then off to the races. Okay, so yeah, that was another third rejection that we saw on that region right there. Once again, the entire cluster of resistance that has now officially turned into support. As far as how, um, how important of a level this is, let me just uh, draw you all the way back to well, some of Bitcoin's historic price action. Now this, what you guys need to understand was this is the first time that Bitcoin on the weekly time frame actually broke the 200 simple moving average to the downside. You'll see that previously. Now this was the COVID dump, right? We technically found a bit of support on the 200 exponential and the 200 simple right there. Right now, that was the COVID dump. That was a black swan event. There was a lot of fear that poured into the market. People basically letting go of their long-term allocations um, and not knowing what to expect from the broader economic conditions. Now, that was the COVID phase. This right here was the 3K bear market phase, right? That was the previous proper bear market that we had where Bitcoin actually went in to put in a proper reversal formation. Nothing as intense as this, of course. We had uh, crazy monetary stimulus that actually came in right here. This was a proper sort of um, cycle bottom, okay, that gave us a reversal formation, breakout, and then off to the races. But notice we never closed underneath the 200 simple moving average and the 200 exponential was being used as overhead resistance. We took it out for the first time and then once again off to the races. That was a very, very important region right there as well, right? The, the 200 exponential. In fact, what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to knock off the 10 SMA and the 21, okay? Both of which we've cleared so far. I want you to focus on just the three... Um, the three moving averages that I have on my screen, which is the ones that we literally just cleared on this most recent weekly close. Now, we, we took out the 200 exponential, okay, which was clearly a very important region. Once again, how important was the 55? 55 too, guys, was very, very, very important. We were held there as, um, as resistance for one, two, three, four, four weeks until we took it out on the fifth week and then once again off to the races getting um taking bitcoin all the way up to 13.7k okay this was from 5.2k all the way to 13.7k what was that move right there even if you take to the wick that was like 160 percent to the upside how about the previous cycle before that right let's go ahead and um look at this right here now notice how the 200 and the the 200 simple and the exponential was used as underneath support for Bitcoin right there too. We took out the 55, 
exponential used it as support and then after the races we did not break back down even one single time so this was a very very important region for bitcoin to clear on the weekly close and we have finally managed to do it okay the entire cluster so we're talking about all three of them knocked off in one felt swoop okay but in addition to us clearing that that crazy cluster of resistance to the upside we have also activated a very very bullish pattern as well now this is something that i had gone over with you guys in my previous video now the thing about um, patterns in general some can be continuation patterns and some are very good reversal patterns okay now it depends on which one that you're looking at now for instance what we're seeing on the chart is an inverted head and shoulders pattern usually inverted head and shoulders prove to be very good um, reversal patterns okay you usually see them in market bottoms so um we have one right here which in my opinion has officially been triggered okay now i want you to look at this line i'm gonna go ahead and mark that out uh, one more time okay which is the neckline that i'm trying to mark out for you guys i'm going to take it from this wick right here to these wicks right here i'm going to extend the line out that is our neckline okay the neckline guys came in also lining up with that entire weekly cluster of resistance believe it or not i have my red box territory right there right that's the red box okay so not only by taking out that region of resistance not only do we take out an important level but we also activated a very bullish pattern okay now this bullish pattern guys um if i go ahead and take the measured move of the pattern and then plot it on the break where does that take bitcoin up to once again for those of you on the target of the pattern that will take bitcoin up to 41.3k now for reference i'm going to draw you into my uh, my previous video and if you want that additional edge i definitely suggest watching the previous video okay because you're going to see something else lining up with this region now once again i'm not going to go ahead and rehash that um, in this video um, I want you guys to also put in the effort if I am going the extra mile to give you that edge that I have in my playbook. Okay, so if you guys want it, you'll have to go and watch the previous video. But 41.3k is going to be an important, important, important region right there. Okay, but that is also marking out the measured move of the inverted head and shoulders pattern. Now, this is all excellent, right? I mean, we've, we've broken out of a key region of resistance. We've activated a very important pattern. But now, if you have to ask me, Krisha, would you buy here? Would I buy here? And a very simple answer to your very simple question is no, I would not be buying here, okay? Bitcoin has already done a good 40% over the past one and a half week. 40%. I am not buying into a 40% pump. And now on a psychological standpoint, guys, and I know that you guys have heard this before, but very seldom do people that people actually heed um, various lessons that they learn from somebody else, especially when it comes to trading. It's like, it's, it's weird, right? You need to feel the pain first before you employ any of the lessons into your trading. Now, one of those lessons is that be a buyer when there's blood on the streets, right? When there's, when the, the, when the market is rife with fear, that is the time you need to be entering. Now, for instance, for instance, just to give you, um, just to show you how to filter out whether or not you can be a buyer without, you know, really catching a falling knife. Take, for instance, this wick right here. Right? This is when uh, we had the banking crisis recently. This is when we had the USDCD peg recently. This is when Jay Powell came out swinging super, super hawkish after months of a dovish stance. Right? Now, when you see things like this, when you see those sort of fundamental events unfold and show themselves on the chart, however, that being say said, the technicals do not break to that extent, right? Because what we were going over here was a bunch of bull run triggers, out of which three went on, okay? On this dump, only one went off. So technically, much of the, much of the technical picture was still intact, okay? We were still holding key regions of support. Now, when you see that, that is a time that, okay, you need to consider, perhaps, should I step in here? If I do step in and price actually does take a shit to the downside, how easy will it be to manage my trade? Right now on those regions of support, it would be very, very, very easy to manage your trade because this guys, this region right here, not only was this weekly support, this was also monthly 10 simple moving average. Right, we had a lot of, of good, very, very strong historic support underneath us to be able to manage your positions very well. Right, so now that is the psychological part of things. Now, if I look at the entire technical side of things here, would I be a buyer after a 40% move to the upside? Well, what are the technicals telling me? Now, yeah, the technicals are a bit sort of, um, I'm going to say this, they're a bit tricky here, but I'm going to lean towards caution. 
okay? If I am, if you are someone considering getting a Bitcoin position here, I'm saying, uh, you know what, uh, weigh, weigh the, the technical picture right now, okay? Because this is what the technicals are telling me. Right now, what I see is that, okay, 27.6K is that next sort of target that I gave you guys the last time around. Now, this I don't just pull out of thin air. I'm looking at uh, price action. I'm looking at momentum. I'm looking at volatility to come up with these targets. Now, 27.6K was a target which we actually closed over on the weekly time frame. That being said, if I go ahead and turn on my Mango Dynamic Indicator and I get rid of these nasty squigglies um, on my chart, okay, and I take you guys on over to the monthly time frame, turn everything off. Notice where we're up against, guys. We're currently up against dynamic resistance. I'm not going to be longing or buying any asset when we're up against a macro freaking resistance. All right, I'll be waiting on the next bid opportunity. I'm not buying against monthly resistance. So I'm seeing this right here. The monthly dynamic, guys, comes in at around 20. Let me get you guys the exact number for those of you who don't have access to the, uh, the indicator. It's $27,926. Okay, the entire cloud setup, if you guys want to mark this out on your chart, the cloud support comes in around 27,926. Cloud resistance overhead comes in at around $33,440. Now, in addition to all of this, the other very important technical picture that I have is, well, the, the volatility profile. Now, for those of you who have access to the dashboard, you guys, like, this is where you start using the volatility profile if you still don't have your positions in. Okay, if you're, if you're wondering, should I be buying here? Check what the dashboard is saying in terms of volatility. I cannot stress this enough. Like the dashboard has saved me from getting into some really shitty positions. Okay, so now get into Bitcoin. So I'm currently on the daily time frame. By the way, the dashboard can be found on app.mangoresearch.co. Okay, there is a free trial that you guys can sign up for if you guys want to give this, um, well, if you want to give this a whirl. So now Bitcoin USD I want you guys to click on the drop down menu right there, right? That's going to give you your multi time frame analysis on what are the various sort of time frames really saying right now. It actually served us the reversals on a platter. So if you look at the the 12 hour time frame has been the most consistent so far. So you got a reversal on that 6.7 days ago. So a week ago, you got the long signal on the dashboard. If you caught it based on the 12 hour trend um, change, you're already up by a good 24%. So you caught the most recent weekly candle move for the most part, right? The two day as well, this happened 2.2 days ago. I think Bitcoin's entire volatility profile in as well as its trend is might just be the best one across the board right now. It's pretty crazy. I think it's well deserved, right? I mean, everyone's been waiting on the for, on the Bitcoin pump. I feel like Bitcoin has not had its days in the sun for a very, very long time, so we're finally getting that. But um, anywho, I want you, I want to draw your eyes to the volatility profile right now, as far as uh, you know, should you be buying here, okay? Because what exactly do we want to see in terms of the volatility profile? Now, personally, I want to see the volatility a bit more sort of compressed. Right? I don't want to see the volatility on 100, 91, 86. These are very high volatility numbers telling me that the move has gotten extremely frothy. Right? When I see those frothy numbers, I can then expect a pullback. So now we can actually draw out a story just by looking at the trend and the volatility profile on Bitcoin. Okay, now what we see here is that the um, the two day, the daily, and the twelve hour time frame, they're all showing those high frothy numbers, telling you to be cautious, telling you that hey, this move might be overextended. All right, and when I see that, I can usually then expect a pullback. But now, as I have mentioned in the past, the thing about trends and the thing about a trend breaking is that at first, that that break in trend first starts from your lower time frames, and then it cascades on over to the higher time frame. Now, what exactly is the four hour trend telling us here? Well, the four hour trend is saying that, hey, you know what? This is still an uptrend. We are still long on the four hour time frame. This has been long for the past one week. Okay, seven days now, this has stayed intact, you're up a good 24%. However, volatility dropping. Okay, so now what this is telling me when I see volatility dropping, I'm noticing that, okay, the four hour now likely has a consolidation on there. It's no longer trending up. When I see these numbers at 91, 186, I'm looking at that trend being very, very frothy. At that point, I'm looking for those rapid moves to the upside. However, when I see volatility flashing 56 and dropping with that red arrow, I know that, okay, there's maybe likely a consolidation on there. So for me to anticipate that next pullback opportunity, Okay, I'll be looking to see where that consolidation breaks towards. Does it break to the upside or to the downside? Because at that point, that's going to give us a better tell on whether or not we could expect a continuation to the upside or a pullback. 
So now we can get into the four hour and see what the four hour is really telling us. But I really implore you guys to start using the dashboard and using it well to drive these stories from it. That way, you know what time frame you need to be looking at to plan ahead. Okay, when it comes to trading, it's always about planning ahead. You do not want to be reacting to price action. You want to be planning ahead. That's what sort of got us to get into positions here, to get into position right here. Okay, because we were planning ahead. All right, so now use the dashboard to plan ahead, get that story in. So now if I take you guys on over to the four hour time frame, let's see what the four hour is doing. Now I have the 27.6K region that I have, um, well, I had derived from price action, from momentum, from volatility, that is a target. Now Bitcoin actually broke underneath that. And I want you to see how well price respected that, that region, the target slash region of resistance on these various four hour closes. Now this happened yesterday, right? You got one, two, three, four, five. So five candles just getting rejected off of 27.6k so this was an important region of resistance now as soon as we took it out yes we saw a bit of a move to the upside but now we've we've sort of broken back down once again now question is does this most recent four hour candle hold it as resistance now if we see an additional sort of rejection on this region right here I will be looking for another move to the downside, perhaps testing the dynamic. At what point will I be expecting lower from Bitcoin? Well, I'm keeping it simple. As soon as we lose the four hour dynamic, guys, I will be anticipating lower from Bitcoin. What I think is going to be the best bid opportunity here or like that lucky bid opportunity, and I definitely am going to be bidding it, is going to be this region right here. Okay, this is that entire cluster of resistance. So we have the 55 EMA there, we have the 200 exponential, we have the 200 simple moving average right there. It's just going to be a very, very easy trade to manage if price does get down there, okay? Because as soon as we break that region on the weekly time frame once again, you know that you're wrong very fast on the trade. Now, of course, I'm only talking to the traders here. If you are someone who still does not have your long-term allocation and you want a long-term allocation on Bitcoin, that is once again going to be a pretty decent level to be had there. Okay, so now what would that move be from where price is at right now to, well, that cluster of, well, support now to the downside is still going to be a good 10% to the downside. But why the dynamic? What am I hinging um, the entire pullback opportunity on the mango dynamic? Because I want you to notice that as soon as we actually took out the 20.8K region, now this was us getting into that entire sort of uh, banking crisis dump, USDC uh, DPEG dump right here, where Bitcoin actually went all the way down to 19.5K. What if? freaking gift but um as soon as we actually took out the four hour dynamic we have been trending on the dynamic ever since okay so i will not be getting spooked out of positions um before we close underneath the four hour dynamic that is the prevalent signature right now okay basically um highlighting the entire trend for us on bitcoin um, as far as uh, targets to the upside is concerned, now remember, I am going to be leaning bullish still on Bitcoin and this might very well see continuation. We might see that that consolid this four hour consolidation break to the upside by simply, well, as soon as Bitcoin, honestly, guys, uh, breaks over 27.6K, we start seeing additional, say we see a, see a 12 hour close over 26.6K, as well as price take out these wick highs right here. I'm saying further continuation to the upside. What is the next target? Well, the next target that I personally am looking at comes in at around, um, I'm looking at a C-SPAN trade actually. Ever since Bitcoin broke past the Tenkin right here, now this was that first initial very volatile pump out of that out of that 15K region, right? Now this happened on Jan 20, Jan 9th. Um, the week of Jan 9th, as soon as price actually broke into that region, we had been holding the Tenkin as underneath support. Like we never really broke back down. Um, even this move right here, which was the banking crisis, um, we only wicked right underneath it only to sort of close well over the Tenkin. So that was a C-SPAN trade activated. Now C-SPAN trade is from a Tenkin all the way up to the Keijun. The Keijun target, guys, comes in at around 31.9K. Okay, so I will be looking at that as the next most immediate target overhead. Alrighty, from a price is at right now, 231.9k is going to be a good another 14% to the upside for Bitcoin. So yeah, that's what I'll be watching out for as far as targets are concerned. Now, is there any fundamental play? Is there any news coming out that could once again spook the markets or maybe give Bitcoin a bullish or bearish tilt? Now, I'm not sure about a directional play as far as the fundamental um, dates are concerned, but here's what we have happening in the next two days. If I take you guys on over to, well, the CME uh, watch tool, we have the FOMC meeting happening in two days and 12 hours. Okay, this is where Jerome Powell um, comes in and basically gives his word on what he intends on doing with interest rates. But considering that we have a banking crisis, considering that many, many community banks in the United States are sort of flailing right now, 
I don't see him swinging hawkish, sure. And what's really ironic about the entire thing is that he was the starting point of all of the implosions that took place, place right after, right? Because he was the one who came out some, what, 10, 15 days ago, swinging extremely hawkish, which, uh, well, caused markets to panic. And so that's when we saw, like, the whole cascade of events sort of flow onto each other. Now, um... Now, this is when the FOMC meeting takes place, but this is what the market is forecasting, okay? Around 40.2% of people, or the market rather, thinks that he is not going to increase interest rates at all, okay? And 59.8% of people think he's going to increase it by 25 basis points. When he came out swinging super hawkish, zero was not even on the freaking table. It was just 25 and 50, and people were not expecting 50. That's why the market freaking panicked. In fact, I have it right here, right? So now this was what the numbers look like. 73.5% of the market thought he was going to increase it by 50 basis points and only 26.5% thought he was going to increase it by 25 basis points. This is after Jay Powell came out swinging super hawkish, right? But now these are the numbers. 50 is not even on the table. It's just 0 and 25. Um, so now what happens is this, can this really tilt the market a certain way? Now we need to understand that it's only Bitcoin that's moved. If you look at SPY, if you look at... Uh, the other markets, they haven't really moved as much as Bitcoin. Bitcoin has had a diabolical move. So say um, in two days, if he actually comes out with zero, I think that could move markets. If he decides to just keep rates flat, I think that could technically move. At the very least, it would move SPY. Um, so um, that's what I'll be watching out for, because if I take you guys on over to the S&P 500, you'll notice on the weekly time frame, um, it's barely moved. Right, so um, yeah, that's essentially what I am going to be looking out for as far as the bearish tilt. Could that cascade on over to Bitcoin? Could Bitcoin see another sort of rally to the upside? If, uh, yeah, the, if SPY rallies, we could see Bitcoin actually rally back up to that 30, 33, 31 to 33K region. So that's what I will be anticipating. Um, but yeah, this is the entire sort of picture for now. Now, as far as the bull run is concerned, guys, I do believe that this is uh, we're in it. We're in it right now. All four on four triggers that I have been harping on about like a freaking broken record have finally freaking gone off. All four on four bull run triggers have officially gone off. Now, let's go over them very quickly. Now, as far as the first bull run trigger that we were looking at, it was the four day dynamic, right? And notice as soon as we took out the four day dynamic, we've been trending over it. Now, we did have one fake out right here. This was during that entire, the most recent dump that we had, the USDC, um, uh, what's a D peg, the banking crisis. So, we did close a four day underneath it only for the next one to well close above. So, we never really saw that confirmation. That's why I always tell you guys wait on confirmation. Confirmation is very, very important. What is confirmation? Two candle closes over or under the region, depending on where you are positioning. Okay. So now that was that. So that was our first trigger, which went off and is still intact. How about the weekly? Now, the second trigger was hinged on the weekly dynamic, right? We were looking for price to live over the weekly dynamic and the tempo going off. And we have both. Okay, so price lived over even during this dump right here. Notice how uh, we never closed a single weekly candle underneath the region as soon as we took it out. Okay, when was the first time we took it out? 16 Jan 2023. All right, so now we have two on four triggers gone off. The next trigger was hinged on the monthly oscillators. Okay, specifically the monthly stokes. What, what we were looking for there, we were looking for a bullish crossover underneath the 25 percentile zone, which we got. Okay, now this usually lines up with every reversal um, in, um, in the past. Now, this was during the bear market of 2018, 2019. We got the bullish crossover. That's when that, that gave us the initial sign that, hey, Bitcoin is getting into its next markup phase, the very first markup phase getting into the next bull cycle, right? The one pre prior to that we got right here, this was us emerging out of the 2015 bear market phase, right? We got the bullish crossover right here and then off to the races, right? That usually marks up or lines up with the reversals of these, uh, these bear markets. Okay, now once again, we got it right here. This happened on, well, uh, the very beginning of March. That's where we actually got the, the first initial crossover. So that is still very much in tax. That's three on four. Now we were waiting on the fourth one for the longest freaking time. Now that was hinged primarily weekly dynamic Ichimoku setting. Let's go ahead and pull that up. In addition to that, we had a filter, which was our 55 simple moving average as the filter. Right, let's go ahead and bring that up. And so what were we looking for on there? We were looking for one candle body close over both levels, which we have finally, after such a long time, received. Okay, I want you to notice how much Bitcoin has been teasing us on this level right here. Um, just zoom into this price action. 
right? We closed uh, into the Ichimoku dynamic, resistance, resistance, held it, almost held it as support. Once again, tried to job up into the 55 SMA, rejected, rejected, came back down, got supported on the Ichimoku dynamic, and then finally, so we've been doing this now since Jan. Okay? So we've been waiting for almost two months for this one to trigger. Okay, so now we finally got the trigger. This is now official. Four on four. Bull run triggers activated. Yes. Um, so yeah, this, is, uh, this has finally come to a conclusion. Okay, so now I usually look for this to give me that tell and that okay. Bull run, here we come. So this is your update. Now, this video has already gone on for longer than I had expected. Um, however, this gives you an entire sort of summary on what's happening in the market. Of course, there's going to be a lot more to talk about tomorrow because that's just how crypto is. It always gives us new things to talk about on a daily freaking basis. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to smash that like button because it goes a very, very long way for the channel. And I will see you in the next update. With this, trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way. Ciao, you guys.